Masking is a crucial technique to understand for non-destructive editing. There are a couple different ways to mask in Affinity Designer, and we'll look at them here. So let's jump in. In a couple of my videos, I've talked about masking in Affinity Designer, but I've never formally explained it. So I thought I'd make this video to actually go over the topic once and for all. Now, masking is a really important non-destructive editing technique, which means it's a way to hide part of your image without permanently removing it. Because maybe later on you want to toggle on and off, or you want to make changes to what you've hidden. Now there are two types of masks in Affinity Designer. There's a pixel mask and a vector mask. And we'll start off by talking about the vector mask. So we'll start with the vector mask. I have two shapes here, a rectangle and an ellipse. And what I can do is I can use this rectangle to determine which part of my circle will be shown. So let me center them here. Now to make my rectangle mask my circle, I'll drag the rectangle over the thumbnail of the ellipse and I'll let go. And now you can see that this ellipse is being masked by the shape of the rectangle. Let me undo that for a moment. If you drag the rectangle over the name of the ellipse, that'll be something different. That's a clipping mask. Clipping masks are also very useful. I made a video on that, so check it out if you wanna learn about how those work. But if you did this, just undo it, and make sure you drag the shape over the thumbnail of the other shape. That'll actually create a mask. Now when I expand this here, you can see my rectangle as the mask here. I can move it around to choose a different part to look at. Maybe I wanna make it have half the circle there. And I can, of course, move the ellipse around. It'll move them all together. If you want to move the ellipse without moving the mask itself, click Lock Children. And then as you move the circle around the child, the rectangle won't move. But usually I don't have Lock Children selected, so I'll unselect that. So this is a basic example of how you can mask two vectors. Let's look at a more complicated example. So here I have a more complicated example. It's a shark graphic, and you can see it is a vector. It's just curves with different colors to make it look like this design here. So what I could do is I could mask this with another vector. So I could draw a circle, and I can drag it over again, remember, the thumbnail. So I do that. And now I have this mask that will only show part of the design. And if I expand my shark, you can see the mask is up at the top here. So I can move it around. I can resize it if I wanted to. Maybe I just wanted the fin to show. I can resize the whole thing. And if I want to delete the mask, I can just select it and press delete. Now I can also create a rectangular mask. So let's do that. And the rectangular mask obviously takes a rectangular shape. So maybe I just want to do the head here. Now the reason I showed you the rectangular one is because there's actually a quicker way to do that. Let me delete this rectangular mask. There's actually a tool called Vector Crop, which is kind of similar to a rectangular mask. So it's this tool over here. So I'll click that. And this is basically going to serve as a rectangular mask for our design. And you can resize it to different ways. But really, I think there's not much difference to it. It's kind of whatever is easiest for you. So now let's look at pixel masks. So I have a document here with an image in it. And it is an image. If I hover over it, you can see it's just an image type. And the way you can add a mask to it is you can click Mask Layer down below here. And you'll see there's a mask there. But in truth, you can't really do a lot with it in the designer persona. If you want to work with pixel masks, it's best to go to the pixel persona. So let's go over there. Now let me delete my mask for a second. Let's say I just want to select this apple by itself and block out everything else. Well, I can do that with the selection brush tool. And this is a tool that really goes hand in hand with the masking tool. I won't go into too much detail here, but I do have a video on the selection brush tool. So check out that if you want to learn more about it. But if I click and drag around here, it does a really good job with this shape. By default, it just is really well defined from its background. So let me zoom in a little bit. I'll touch it up, I'll try to get the stem. And now with my layer selected and this selection made, what I'll do is I'll click the mask layer button. You can see it created a mask for it. Now, if you haven't used masks before, what you need to know is that black hides things, white shows things, and levels of gray will have some type of transparency in between. Now, it may look odd also because you don't see the mask, but if you press Alt and press on the mask here, you can see what it actually did. So the black area is the part that it hid and the white area is the part that's showing. So I can just hit Alt and click back on it again to get this view again. Now when you first work with masks, it feels a little awkward because you don't see what you're doing, but as you get more experience, it kind of becomes second nature. And as I said, masks are non-destructive. So by clicking this button here, I can turn it on and off. And of course you can also delete the mask totally if you wanted to. So here we have our mask. And one thing we can notice is that our mask needs a little bit of touching up. So down here, it looked like it picked up a little bit of the tablecloth. If I alt click on it, you can see it's a little bit jagged there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a paintbrush and I'll select one of these softer brushes. And if I zoom in, as I said, black will hide things. So I can select my color as black. And with the layer selected, when I paint on it, 
it's going to erase that part of my image. But it's not permanent, it's just the mask that's doing that. For example, if I delete too much into it, I can select white, and then I can get it back. So if we look at the mask now, we can see what it looks like there. And in fact, my brush was soft, so we had a little bit of a gray area there. Let me um, make it harder. Now it's pure white. So here we have an example that's a little more complicated, a car, and I'll do my selection brush again. And there's a couple other things I want to show you with this technique that might help you make more efficient masks. So let me just select it roughly. So I selected the car and maybe I want some of the sidewalk too. So I'll click mask layer. So I masked it and one thing I like to do is to add a contrasting background color to help me see exactly what the mask is doing. Because sometimes it's default checkerboard background with this kind of white and gray colors. It's kind of hard to see what's actually happening. So I'm gonna create a pixel layer. And I'm gonna put it on the bottom and I'm gonna use my flood fill tool. I'm gonna select a bright green. You can choose whatever color you like, but just something that's bright and contrasting and I'll fill it in. And when I do this, it makes it much easier to see where the mistakes are. For example, there's a big gap here, there's a piece missing there, and a lot of the edges kind of need work. So the way you fix this is you select your mask, you select a brush, and I'll select a hard brush, because we know we're gonna be pretty solid here. And I'll just paint white over this area. Now for this part, what I can do is I can select white, and I can overpaint the edge of my car, and I can select black and delete it. And this back and forth refinement is kind of a common part of making a good mask. Now clicking back and forth is kind of inconvenient. So you can actually press shift X and that will toggle between these two colors here. And whenever you hover the mouse over something, it'll show you what would happen if you clicked. So right now I have white selected. So when I hover over things, it shows what would be put back in if I painted there. So I'll do this. You can see that's there. If I do shift X, now I'm in erase mode. You can see what would happen if I erased part of the car. So I'll do shift X to put it back in. And I'll paint some of this back in. So we use the selection brush. There are settings here and there's also a refine option. I made a video on that. So I'll put a link below if you want to learn more about how that works. Now I've gone back to the designer persona and I said I'd show you what the mask does in that mode. So you can add a mask here. And really for the most part, what it does is allows you to add gradients and transparency. So if I add a gradient here, I can make my image somewhat transparent. I'll make this black so it's fully transparent. So if I alt click on my mask, you can see what's happening. It's just applying this gradient here and it's adding the transparency as it goes from white to black. This is essentially the same as the transparency tool. So I can remove the mask and I can click this glass here and that's the transparency tool. So which method you like is kind of up to you. They're pretty similar. One other use for masking is to add texture to things. For example, text. So I'll go to the pixel persona again. And if I add a mask to this title here, I can go and I can select some type of interesting brush. Let's find engraving. I'll do that one, make my text black. And with my layer selected, you can see I'm painting out of my text here. So I can add kind of a grunge effect. And if you do too much, you just select white and paint back in. So you can kind of go back and forth when adding a texture. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you do this, you are adding a raster effect. So if I zoom into the texture here, it's not going to have infinite resolution. You can see pixelation here. Now in practice, usually the resolution of the brushes is high enough, but it's something to be aware of when you export these images. If you still have questions about how masks work, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.